Hi, everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with J. Cooper Travels, Crypto Mom 2, and Love Travels Scotland. And I want to welcome everyone to this episode. I have a really special guest on that I think you're going to love. Um, we are going to be talking a lot about how do we keep ourselves balanced in this world that has both the tech as well as the foundation of being outside in your garden. So there's the inside and the outside. Uh, but before I, I bring her on, I want to share with everyone, in case you're new to this talk show, definitely hop over to the video side because a lot of times you will see visuals that you might not see on the audio side and definitely like and subscribe. But my background is that I am both an educator as well as an attorney and I'm also a mom. And I uh, love all different phases of my life, and I'm also an author. So you, um, I have found that I sometimes do too much, and as a result, I have to find my balance. And that's one of the reasons why I created the Happiness Factor News, because it's all about you know a journey of how do we rejuvenate, how do we recharge, how do we refresh, and how do we keep going, you know, because if we don't... Um, think about ourselves, then we can't give to others. But sometimes we forget about that, especially as women, we're always about giving and giving and giving. <laughs> so with that said, I want to welcome my guest on today. Shauna, I cannot thank you enough for hopping on. I know you're a fellow talk show host, and you're also an artist. And you are doing so many creative things. And you're also a global citizen and traveler. You've been around mm. the world in so many different countries. Yeah. Um, and you um, you help individuals, you know, find their center through mm. intuition and through so many, you know, other spaces through the journey of life. So I, I really want to learn more about your story so those that are listening can see... Um, how you can help them and how they can, through your wisdom and, and life journeys, how they can help themselves. So welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so grateful to be here. This is It's always so fun to get to have these types of conversations. So thank you so much, Jackie, for having me here. Um, you know, my story is kind of, it, it's such a, I, every time I tell it, it's a little bit less and more triggering for me and for others. Um, so basically it kind of, my my story began when I was very, very young. My father was mentally ill and, you know, I, we grew up in a, in a Jewish home where you sort of didn't talk about those things. And he got really out of control and was institutionalized for a good part of my life. And I realized at a really young age that I also could hear voices and it scared the crap out of me because I thought, okay, it's in the stars. I'm just going to be him. <laughs> um, I'm going to, you know, eventually be off the deep end. So may as well just help myself along. I tried in my teens and my early twenties to really help myself along. And then, um, I kind of realized, oh no, no, it's not actually a terrible thing. It's actually a beautiful thing. And ha being able to, you know, kind of hear these voices, there are messages, there are things to actually communicate and share with people. And, you know, so I kind of started on the journey of self-exploration and, um, you know, through different therapies connected with some really powerful metaphysical healers um, and started to learn that metaphysics and then really started to tap into my psychic gifts um, and, and let myself kind of go all the way into whatever that looked like. And um, the more deep I went, the more people would be like, where are you swimming to? <laughs> And so I started to teach people, you know, kind of how to breathe underwater a little bit and just be like, well, you know, you hold your breath like this and you do this and you, you know, you practice these types of things and relate to yourself this way, change your stories and, you know, just relate to, to the world around you in a different kind of way. And, um, you know, then the more that I did that, the more that I wanted to keep doing that. And so I studied a lot of esoterics and a lot of um, astrology, became an astrologer and started to really just um, dig deeper into that and, and melding my traditional practice um, of, you know, how I was raised with all of the things that I was learning on the journey. So, um, 
you know, here I am now. And most, most of what I do is just talk. I talk a lot. I ask a lot of questions and I help other people to like uncover. Um, but you know, it's mostly just through letting people see and be seen is, is kind of big part of what I do. I love what you were talking about in terms of the breathing. And, mm. uh, so did you find that you were learning about breathing to center yourself or were you learning about it for meditation? Um, where, where did it kind of fit in your own journey? Yeah, it changes a lot, actually, my, my practice of breathing. And it's really interesting to see how and when it shows up, um, and, you know, the different cycles of it, um, I think it started certainly as a way to calm myself. I had really um, overwhelming uh, regulating issues when I was a teen. Um, I, I had really tough time with that. And so breathing was something that I started to help me regulate, um, to not sort of lose my cool or go into like deep, dark depressions. And then um, as I started moving into this sort of more metaphysical space, then it became like, okay, well, what is meditation and how do I get there? And so breathing on purpose in that way, and, and actually not just like trying to somatically calm myself, but really like energetically and from a headspace, like where can I go? How can I explore into this place or that place? Right. And then as I got even further on the journey, it was like, okay, well, can I transmute this? Can I like change something with my breath on purpose. Right. Um, and what, what, how far can I take that? You know? And so the practice changes a lot. And, and like I said, day to day, sometimes it's like, I'm in a heightened moment and I just like need to be in some Zen with some breath. And other times I'm like, no, I'm on it. I got it. Like, let's just breathe through this and have like a heavy, deep breathing, you know, 20 minute breath session. Um, but yeah, it changes, but I love the question. <laughs> So you mentioned that you did, uh, I know you do a lot of reading. Um, mm. Is there a certain book or series of books that you've read mm. that have really helped guide your practice and the direction that you're taking now? Hmm. My goodness. You know, the book that I go back to over and over and over and over and over again, it seems like such a simple one, but it is the one that has transformed my life the most uh, is The Four Agreements. I know um, Yes. <laughs> yeah. Most many, it's, it's a well-known book and it is, it's one of those books much the way I feel about Harry Potter. I feel about the four agreements, which is that each time you connect with it, each time you read it, you're different. And so you relate to it differently and you receive something different from the universe through the words that are on the page, even though they haven't changed. Although from some quantum space, maybe they have, um, but Right. So there's, yeah, that, that would be like one of the things that I, that I try to go back to over and over and over again, um, from a more high level, I would say the Kabbalion, like that, that book has really, um, shaped a lot of me. Um, as same with the Celestine prophecy that that book also really like takes me to places, but truly like the books that have shaped me most are Harry Potter. And it sounds ridiculous, um, but I was so impressionable when, when they first came out, I was quite young. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 38 years old now, so do the math folks. Um, and when those books were coming out, I was suppressing all of my magic, but I knew that it was in me. Like I always knew that I was this really special magical person who had power beyond what others could see and feel and know, but I was so terrified of it. And Harry Potter let me dream about it. Harry Potter let me kind of be it in a way. And I was like, yeah, I've never been a muggle a day in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, and and now as an adult, I, you know, I I get to connect with it on that level um, in really in really cool ways when I go back to it. So I like how you're talking about the magic. Um, how would you, would you suggest to individuals to find the magic within their lives? be alive, <laughs> which is to say, you know, in this life, we are made up of five, but really physically four elements. So fire, earth, air, water, and then the fifth is spirit. And so, you know, when you're connecting in with 
things that are alive, what is alive within you. We have all of these four elements inside of us, right? If you've ever gotten really angry, you've angry, you've been fiery before. And if you've ever cried, you've been water. You know, if you've ever taken a breath, you've been air. And if you've ever needed to just ground yourself and feel connected, you are earth. And we're made of stardust as well. That's the spirit, right? That's the everything else. <laughs> and so, you know, the more that you let yourself connect with those things inside and outside in all of the ways that matter. And I personally, you know, biasly find that astrology helps because astrology for me is about the elements, you know, each planet is connected to, sorry, each, each sign is connected to a different um, element and the planets within and their archetypes are how you show up in that. That can be very helpful, but really like truly just being alive and noticing the things that are, happening outside of you. So that might be flowers on the ground that are growing and it might be birds in the trees and it might be like wind in the, in your hair or whatever, you know, a bonfire, a candle, whatever. The connecting to those things actually helps you to like recognize your aliveness and that you're possible in it. And then from that possibility, you can create whole new pathways of creating yourself. I agree, especially because, you know, depending upon how a day goes, sometimes you need mm -hmm. to kind of get recentered. And by looking around you, you'll have hopefully the awe of the child again and to be able to see yeah. something new and different, um, you know, which kind of just kind of shifts you in a different direction. Uh, mm -hmm. So for for I know you and I've talked about sometimes the seasons create different feelings of energy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, whether it's the winter or the spring or the summer, um, any guidance for individuals as they are feeling the ebb and flow of what's going on, uh, so that mm -hmm. they can keep centered. Yeah. You know, first of all, um, if you are a womb holder, um, then it is very helpful to track the moon. Um, she will help you to move through those cycles. You are cycling with her, whether you're aware of it or not. So whatever, whether you're, whatever stage you're in of your life, whether you're, you know, before you get your, you know, menstruation, when you have it or after we're all cycling with her, we are human beings, 80% water. So like, and the moon moves the tide. So things cycle and we cycle. And that's sort of a smaller cycle that you can watch yourself on and then notice, okay, how is that happening as we're moving through the seasons, right? And eventually what happens is you start to notice, you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's this season. I don't do so great. You know, like for me, Capricorn season is a really hard one that like time around Christmas time, right? Like that's, I mean, maybe it's my Jewish trauma. Maybe it's just that it's freezing cold and I live in Toronto most of the time, although not going forward in the winter time, but we'll pause that one. Um, but typically that's been a really hard time for me. And so, you know, knowing that in yourself and being connected to, well, what is that time about? What is it meant to be? What is it meant to teach you? And what am I avoiding in myself? What am I actively trying not to look at? That can help you because- you know, when you go into the microcosm of the month, as the moon cycles around from sign to sign to sign to sign to sign to sign, you can be like, oh yeah, the moon is in Capricorn, which every single month it will be. And notice, cool, this is feeling like crap, right? And then you can kind of know, like, I guess when the whole season shows up and it's different for everybody because we all have different placements and different experiences, different traumas, different you know, things that, that are true for us. Um, but, you know, in your own process of connecting in with cycles, the best thing you can do is just notice where things constantly show up. Like you have your own habits and behaviors. So notice them, but notice them without that feeling of like self-deprecation and judgment. That's been a conversation in, in my life, like quite a bit lately. Like, can you just notice without trying to make it something, you know? Um, and that's, that's a process and definitely having somebody to kind of lovingly remind you that the light is over this way and you can just <laughs> go, go back if you want <laughs> helps, um, you know, so if that's like a therapist or a healer or whatever, that's, it's a good thing to have. I'm going to have to pull out my astrological chart. I had it done many years ago and I'm going to have to now take a look at that and say, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, it's interesting because when you cross that with your own chart, you can notice like, okay, what house is that for me? What planets are sitting there? Why, you know, what do those planets represent? This is again, why astrology for me is like the answer to everything, because you really can go so deep with it to understand who you are at the core and that there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. right? It's just how you're relating to that part of yourself. I also loved when you had said that, you know, like if you're reading a book at one point in your life and you read it back again at a different point, you're going to have different meanings. And I think the same thing with any of the charts or anything else that we do, yep. um, you know, our, our perspective, it's like walking around a mountain. We're still on that mountain, but every part, every side of the mountain is going to be a little bit different. So um, how we see things is going to be a little bit different based upon the experiences mm. that we've had. So, yeah, this is like, that's the transits. That's how that's, that's the reflection that like, yes, the planets were somewhere when you were born, but they're somewhere else now, then they're moving. They're really moving <laughs> right now. If for anybody who's tracking astrology is like, they're laughing because there's a lot of really potent astrology that we haven't seen in like hundreds of years, right? Since the fall of Rome, some of these things we haven't seen. So it's really interesting to see where we're at and, and how we're changing the conversation around it all. So I want to make sure that people know how to reach you. Can you share with everyone how they can reach out to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a podcast called I'm Really Into That Stuff because I just thought everybody who told me, you know, when I was like, I, I love crystals and this is what I do for a living. They're like, oh yeah, I'm really into that stuff. So you can listen to that on, on Spotify. Um, there's a whole bunch of different episodes and actually I'm starting now to upload them to YouTube. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go and check it out there. Um, which is, I believe, I think it's just my Jana Stern YouTube. If you, if you Google me, all the things will come up. Um, similarly, janastern.com, which is J-A-N-A-S-T-E-R-N.com. Um, that's my website. You know, you can book services and learn a little bit more about me there. Um, you know, if you've got questions, you can always slide into my DMs. Um, I'm often readily available um, on Twitter and on Instagram. Those are pretty good socials to find me on, though I do have a Facebook and TikTok probably not the best way to get me. Um, but I'm there with a the presence, I guess. Um, is that 2023 vibe? Um, you know, and, and yeah, I, I mean, you can find me on crypto Twitter a lot. I'm, I'm hanging out there quite a bit, um, you know, on Twitter spaces and having these sort of more meaningful conversations, because I think that we're trying to change the world with crypto. And um, these conversations are really important to be had um, as we change the whole system <laughs> what do you think is the most important message that needs to be shared within the crypto space hmm. Hmm. something like you know if you're going if you would regret putting it on the blockchain if you would regret it being there forever don't do it there is just so much nonsense happening in especially in NFT Twitter, like that place is a high school with mean, it's just, it's, there's a lot happening there. And I just feel like, you know, we're, we're trying to make a difference, but we're also really still very human as we build this thing. And, you know, especially as we move towards AI, I think one of the really important things to focus on is um, where's your humanity? Like, are you being human first? <laughs> Um, and that's what I mean about, you know, if you wouldn't want it to be on the blockchain forever, if you wouldn't want that behavior to be sort of in people's faces as who you are, don't do that. And also don't invest in things that don't feel aligned. Your intuition will tell you what's really right for you. I own a lot of projects that are not necessarily like traditionally successful, and I don't own a lot that are traditionally successful, but I feel really aligned in the, all the things that are in my wallet. The things in my wallet make me feel good. And, you know, purchasing that way and, and, and investing that way feels really good. So I would say like invest in, do a lot of research and um, invest in the things that feel good so that when you look back at your, you know, the transactions in your wallet, you can be like, I've only ever done good things here. Yeah. And there are a lot of projects that actually give back to others. So, so many. 
So, I mean, that's another thing to kind of, um, you know, to do research on is which, which organizations are helping both the planet, children, animals, you know, a lot of different, a lot of different ways to support. Um, so uh, like you said, you know, if it, if it feels good, uh, then again, not investment advice, you got to do your own research. There's always risk involved, but if it feels good, then at least take that step to look at why does it feel good for you? Mm -hmm. Um, usually if you are feeling a block, there's a reason for that. And the caution that you're feeling is probably might be because there's something else underlying it that, um, where there's a danger. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's just like street smarts. This is blockchain smarts. You know, you, you've got to, you know, if you wouldn't walk down the street and have your, you know, your wallet out and cash out so someone can grab it, then think the same on the blockchain. How are you acting in a way that is both um, positive and kind as well as protective? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is a big part of why I teach about intuition, because I think we're actively not taught that when we're children, right? We know that. In fact, the opposite. A lot of our conditioning is to suppress that. And as we go to build a new world where finance is different, exchange of energy is different, I think we have to have a different understanding of what energy even is. And so when you learn to tap into your intuition and really feel that, like, I don't know if I can swear, but that F yes, or that, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure is a no. So but if you don't know how to gauge that, if you don't know where that, what that feels like in your body or how it shows up in your reality, you can't make it aligned decisions. So, you know, I think that the conversations go together for me um, because I think that in order to build a better world, we have to be better for ourselves. Um, and, and that starts with really being able to like hear what source is trying to share with us, which is constantly coming through, through numbers and signs and symbols and, you know, angels and voices and all, all kinds of other extrasensory things that I'm not going to get too deep into, but yeah, I, I think it's really important. So, yeah, I do, I do want to mention going back to the doing good thing. Um, you, when you're, if you're in the crypto space and you're doing the research, look beyond the words. Because um, sometimes, like with FTX, um, you know, there was a lot of good words, but not always good actions. Yes. So, um, you know, we can print something and say something, but, you know, that takes, that's why it takes a little bit of extra effort sometimes to find mm -hmm. a community or the group that you actually want to be a part of. Um, and yeah. that extra time is, is, is not wasted. That's, it's important. So, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, it's, um, you're, like you said, you're putting your thumbprint on a new energy space. And this might literally be your digital footprint for the rest of human history. Yeah, exactly. And, um, the law background in me is, is saying to everyone out there, make sure you have a will and make sure you only because of the fact that if you are trying to create digital assets for your family and you don't tell your family where they are, they're going to literally stay on the blockchain forever. And the people who yeah. love and want to benefit from it won't know it, but that's a whole nother area. But again, we are, um, we're able to, um, these are thoughts. These are energy. These are um, are are beings. You know, they're the these are mm -hmm. balls of energy that we're sending out, and we definitely need to be thinking about. Um, if you think about light, if you think about sound, you know the particles they vibrate back and forth, mm -hmm. and so are are we creating? a spin that we want to have energetically be there for right. her, like you said, yeah. or how are, how are we, how are we creating more balance? Cause there's so much imbalance mm -hmm. in the traditional world. How are we creating more balance in the digital world in the yeah. online world? And so again, I think that, you know, you were, you and I were talking about the need to create more light in that space. Yes. Um, and so this is important for each one of us who happens to step into that space. We have to be more aware of our purpose and what our, uh, even if we're not totally aware of our purpose by being there, but just be more aware, like you said, of 
is this a, 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 a message that you want to live on forever there right it's another another poetry that you want to have left behind <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly if somebody were to go back in a hundred years and read your your book your blockchain are they going to be like great human or like uh and i want to say two things one about the ftx thing um that is part of a old system like he was part of an old system playing into what crypto is it is he does not represent the decentralized finance community very much uh, so. yep right Great. um yeah and so like you know if people are wanting to know like what are the crypto good projects out there slide in my dms i'll send you a whole bunch of them you can invest many of them are minting now um and the other thing that i want to say was um you know for those who are already bringing light into other people's lives um that is also something that we need to be bringing to the blockchain and so if you're like yeah i do these things but i don't really get what crypto is all about also slide into my DMs because that is a service that I do provide where I can help you to actually create a project around your services, around your light and what you bring, because we need more of that. We need more light workers. We need more healers. We need more therapists. We need more, you know, people who are in alignment and in integrity with the highest good to come and build. So if, you, if you're listening and that feels like, yeah, that's me, hit me up. Yeah, I mean, again, um, it's a different space for creatives to show what they have. Yeah. Um, you know, it might not be the brick and mortar, but you can just transfer your skill set from the brick and mortar over here. And yeah. um, and there is, it's a huge world. <laughs> it really is. And it's also a very small one. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're not in it, acting in that way, it will all come to fruition, especially on the blockchain. And I, I look forward to the accountability of that. Uh, would you say that that's karma? <laughs> um, I, I want to say like everything is karma. Right. And I look forward to the karma being transparent. Like I look for, you know, we talk about a lot of the things that have happened in uh, the old system, um, and the people who've been exploited throughout history and, you know, the, that have taken money in politics and things of that nature. It just isn't possible on the blockchain. It's not possible. It's there for people to see. So the transparency of your karma is right there. If you're faking it, we know if you're pulling, if you're draining a wallet, we know that it's gone from this wallet to you. We know who's taken it, Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is anonymity and obviously we know that in many spaces like NFTs and, and crypto can be very like a casino and kind of, you know, you don't know who the house is and who's winning, but, um, I, I think it's important to, to be mindful of those things as we build. And I think that the, um, one of the intents of the decentralized system and community is to put ownership back into the individual hand. So that way, yeah. um, economically, people can control what they want um, mm -hmm. in free speech. They can control yeah. what they want, you know, again, yeah. hopefully for a higher good. But um, it's, it's, it's kind of going back in many ways to the old type of communities where you didn't always have the tech side, where you kind of, would walk and then meet another village and then you'd walk and meet another village and you'd share and you know you could share a meal and you mm. know again, that might be very idealized I, idealized but um again the the DAOs and the other groups that are within the decentralized community there's a lot of great conversations that are happening so oh, yeah yeah so i would definitely if you're if you're not if you're not exploring yet take a step and and um reach out and you know um don't be afraid it's you know again it, there's there's a lot of a lot of ways for you to positively uh become involved i know that um you often share different messages with people for um their direction and their purpose when you have someone who approaches you as a um someone that needs your services 
how do you work with them? How do you, um, you know, find out a little bit more about who they are and how they need your help? Yeah. A lot of the times, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite lucky that as so, soon as somebody comes my way asking, um, spirit will usually give me a pretty f- well-rounded understanding of what the big picture is. Um, and then, you know, usually like immediately from the DM, Hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm in. in, You know, are you around? Can I, you know, I need you right now or whatever. I usually have like a pretty full, like, Oh boy, come over me. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times people do need to, to unpack a little bit and kind of work through that. So, um, you know, I do have like a, a consultation that you can book. It's 50 bucks. It's like pretty easy peasy to just hop on a call. Um, you know, they're usually about half an hour and we can really start to unpack and make that process happen. Um, and then, you know, it, there are lots of ways that I, I work with people. One of the ways is that I, um, I have like a, a whole package where over a minimum of 10 months, but usually it's more like 20, 25, uh, sorry, 10 weeks, but often as many as 25 or 30, we have five different sessions where we work through something in- intentional, like some, some intention that you really want to work through. We start at point A and we move all the way through. Um, that's a really, really helpful practice and helps me to see your progress, where you're growing, where you're still not looking. Um, and then, you know, for people in the physical, um, I do a lot of actual metaphysical healing. So um, moving energy around your body, crystal healing. Um, also for those who are interested in psychedelics, I, I do guided, you know, uh, journeys. Um, and that's something that I've been doing a long time. So it's, it's really, um, it's, it's very customized as to what people need. A lot of it is, you know, not ironically, very intuitive. Um, and most people, when they come to me have sort of an idea of like, I'm stuck in this, this thing isn't working, this relationship, this business, this part of me, I'm trying to connect a little bit deeper, I want to go, you know, more esoteric or more, you know, deep into astrology, whatever the thing is. And most of the time, I'm like, all right, well, we got to, we got to process for that. And then, you know, if people are virtual and they just want to do like a one-off there, I do astrology readings. I do uh, Oracle readings where I'm literally just kind of hopping into the channel, giving you whatever comes through and working it out. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah. Reading the Akashic records, all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> so, um, which I do love, uh, do you, mm-hmm. so are you, mo- do, are most of your clients Toronto based or virtual? I'm very lucky. Um, for many years, my my practice was based in Toronto because I was based in Toronto. Uh, and then I started the journey of travel. Mm-hmm. And um, as I started traveling, I started to realize that, um, A, I could gather clients wherever I was because they would always find me. Um, and B, that I had this ability to read people from anywhere. So um, it's a big, beautiful kind of collection of people all over the world. And especially, you know, working in the Twitter space, uh, I've met some really incredible people, uh, either in Twitter spaces, um, or, you know, conferences and things of that nature that that have, um, you know, hopped in and said, Hey, I like what you have to offer. Can I have more? Why don't you go ahead and share again how people can reach out to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, the thing I didn't say earlier is that I actually have two crypto projects. Uh, one, um, they're like teeny tiny collections. They're just my art up on the blockchain. Uh, one is called uh, The Higher Beings. Uh, that one's on Ethereum. And then uh, my little babies, my original entry into the crypto space, my crystal magic with a K at the end, magic punks. Uh, those guys are available on Polygon, which I love the Polygon network. I love my Polygon fam. I adore them. Um, <laughs> so there's those guys are available. Uh, there's still a couple of them uh, available uh, to mint on the blockchain. So you can check those guys out. Um, website is Jana, J-A-N-A, stern.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, my podcast, I'm really into that stuff. Say your podcast name again. I'm really into that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) 
for anyone that didn't get that, I wanted to make sure. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Um, so for everyone who's listening and for everyone who's on the Zoom, thank you so much for being on. Uh, this has been fun. And I know that we're going to have other conversations as um, the world ebbs and flows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Goes through its cycles, you might say. <laughs> Yes. Um, we'll yeah. have a lot of uh, interesting conversations and a lot of laughs. But for those uh, that are listening, definitely subscribe so that way you can um, stay tuned for the next episodes. And as I always say at the end of all my um, conversations, be kind to yourself, be kind to uh, others. We are all part of one world and we are all very interconnected. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.